uh, this is a quote that uh, from one of the their, uh, one of the most famous openly gay directors in Korea. Back in the old days, Korean homosexuals did not even have a window of their time to be homosexual. Nowadays, Korean homosexuals can be hetero can be str- can be actingly straight from Monday to Friday, and then. From Friday night to Saturday Sunday, they can be homosexual. There are revenues, there are gatherings, there are ways that they can communicate and be homosexual. And he says at the end of the quote by um, by saying that, but he, but I wish that this full can change and that Korean homosexuals can be homosexual from Monday to Sunday and continually. And so I think that I think that pictures the the right portrait of what Korean especially gay guys are going through, particularly. Korean gay guys who can be actingly straight can tolerate, at least from Monday to Friday, and then they can just go, okay, I can be gay now. I can go to clubs, I can go to bars, I can go to coffee shops where I can be myself. And there's nothing wrong to it. And so... um, The um, source of homophobia is usually religious-based, mostly Christianity in the West. Um, Korea, you're starting to see that be a more prevalent reason. Yet you have dual reasons for them to have some sort of um, cultural homophobia, and that would be Confucianism and Christianity. And as Christianity supplants Confucianism, it becomes a lot more louder. The homophobia does, um, because on the one hand, you have uh, when, when it's more Confucian based, it's more seen as like a Western phenomenon. That um, you know, Koreans are very family based. It's, it's just something Koreans do. And if you're gay, it's just something that you caught from the West. Koreans are just not gay. Um, and even if you are gay, well, you still need to create a family because that's the purpose of your life. So it's <laughs> you see you see a lot of situations where where Korean men come out to their families and, and they say, okay, well great, when are you getting a wife? And, and that's, that's just how they see it. Um, and I know I'm painting a very broad brush right now. And there definitely is a um, certain amount of protection you have as a Westerner here um, from any sort of anti-gay comments or, or views. Um, to, 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 so if, you, if you're a Westerner, you come in and you go to the few gay bars, you know, maybe in Hill and Itaewon or don't know. You're like, oh, well, it's, it's perfectly fine. I'm openly gay. My friends, they don't care. Um, but if you're Korean, it's, it's a very different experience. Not this job, but I had another job as a teacher. Um, and I was encouraged by my foreign boss to come out to her, and I did. And um, a, a few weeks later, she decided that she didn't like my teaching style, became very critical of weird things, gave superficial um critiques and, and deadlines I had to meet that nobody else had to meet. And it, and it was pretty clear she was trying to set a paper chair to fire me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, 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 do, I don't... I mean, I, I, of course, I don't have any proof. Yeah, of course. Uh, is there any legal protection in Korea for anyone who is discriminated against for being homosexual or lesbian? I don't believe there is, but, you know, honestly, if, even if there was, it wouldn't be very effective. Because if, if someone was fired for being gay or lesbian, and but they were fired for another reason, keeping that reason would be a lot less socially stigmatizing than actually having to come out being gay or lesbian. Right. So a South Korean, if they were fired for being homosexual or lesbian, they'll just agree that they're incompetent or an incompetent worker if their boss fires them for being incompetent, rather than agreeing that they're gay and coming out and saying they're gay and then uh, having the social reaction to that. Right. I think that'd be a lot more detrimental. Basically, if I can just give you a a brief rundown of what I've found out so far, and then perhaps you can either confirm, deny, fill the blanks if you wish. Um, So uh, what I've found so far is that a lot of homosexual and lesbian people in Korea are very well educated firstly, Uh, Secondly, live a double life uh, in that they often hide their identity or their homosexuality 
from their friends, from their co-workers, from their parents. Those that have had the courage to come out only come out to specific friends and they lose friends in the process, which is not unique. Uh, it happens in the West as well. Those who do come out sometimes even lose their jobs, which I found really uh, unusual, but hey, that's Western, uh, sorry, that's Korean society. It wouldn't necessarily happen in the West, but I'm not saying it would never happen either. Mm -hmm. um, that a lot of people who are in gay and lesbian relationships move overseas. So I've heard the, the story of a well, uh, well-respected doctor moving to Japan and then over to the United States from Korea. Uh, so that he could practice his homosexuality openly and not feel like he has to be ashamed or hide it. Uh, I've heard several stories of educated men being told they have to marry uh, by their parents, even though that they're, they're gay. Uh, they haven't come out to their parents, but uh, one of them has a boyfriend and has had that same boyfriend for eight years. And uh, he's obviously an English teacher in Korea and has to keep renewing his visa I think every 12 months or two years. Uh, so he needs sponsorship. He doesn't have the same rights as a married couple, even though they are married and had a civil union in New Zealand. Um, but his parents still force him to get married. And the mum keeps telling the uh, Western boyfriend, can you encourage my son to get married, please? Uh, even though she suspects that they're in a homosexual relationship. So there's the family pressures there, and that seems to be a consistent story from everyone, female, male. Um, the only people who aren't telling me that, that that is an issue is the 18 and 19 year olds that I've interviewed, who believe it or not, are the most articulate 18 and 19 year old people I've ever spoken to. I'm serious, and that we're talking bilingual people who, who are, uh, are going to be in positions of power in the future, I can guarantee that. So that's very positive for Korea. But unfortunately, these people all want to study over in America, Australia, the United Kingdom and Europe because they are tired of hiding their identity and feeling ashamed of who they are. So that's basically where I'm at right now. There's one other thing that I need to mention. We've interviewed a few pastors in churches and they've said that homosexuality is a sin, firstly. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, that homosexuality is something that came from the devil and it's seeking to take over society and destroy humanity. Um, I've also heard somebody say that uh, homosexuals don't deserve human rights uh, because anal sex is not a human right. And uh, there's a few other things as well, but I think you get the picture of what a lot of the extreme Christian groups are suggesting. So with that in mind, can you confirm that, deny that, and share your story as well? Okay, first of all, I confirm everything that you mentioned to be true. And I confirm this by me personally going through the experiences myself. And also, I can actually... For what I've witnessed, I have been, I have been socially out in 2012, uh, being involved in an affirming church, being a board member, and also a Korean English translator at an affirm at the affirming church that I've been to. Um, and for that matter, I have seen and I have heard stories, the exact same stories that you've been mentioning. Also, I have been looking into a lot of LGBTQ-related articles. And they say the same accounts that you have mentioned. So I do confirm every single thing that you mentioned, also including the ones that you mentioned on the opposite side, the accounts from the pastors. And so I do confirm, if you want me to quote some of what they say, I can, right. uh, with names, but I don't necessarily want to do that. And I think that's not really what my intention should be. What I would like to add to what you've already done through your research is that the religious sector, the voices of the religious sector is very, very outspeaking. Not necessarily loud or not necessarily huge, but it's just outspoken. So for that matter, these are whatever is mentioned there from their articles, like Christian Today or like um, Korea Herald, which is backed up by the, the conservative Christian groups. Would, would mention, would post articles that have to do something about anti-homosexuality, and then that gets into the mainstream of media. And 
the way how they also use this is to add Confucianism into it. So, for instance, like churches would say that homosexuality is sin, but then there will be pastors that who will mention that it is so wrong, it is against filial piety, it is against how Korean society is working, and it is against the norm. So, therefore, for those that who are sons and daughters that who are coming out of the closet, they're saying that you are not doing your duty as a son or a daughter because this is against Confucianistic way of our society, how our society has been woven. So it's very interesting to see that as a gay Christian myself and also a Korean myself, that they would pick and choose certain elements of our Korean society and culturally bind it by using the scripture, by using Confucianistic um, uh, uh, virtues, virtues, and and pin them on and say that this is why we are against homosexuality. Pastors say that I am bound to hell, and what the interpretations, whatever of the uh, the scripture, what other people say about that I is I am bound for hell, and so I would always cry out in my prayers and say that please let me a beggar in heaven. And just keep me out of hell. I, I can live with the fact that I can be a beggar in, in heaven, but just don't send me to hell. I mentioned to my family, to my parents, that I do not want to hear a word from my relatives. When uh, do you have a girlfriend? Or when are you going to marry? Because I am now first in line to be married, to be honest. And so, yeah. Um, and my parents asked why. And I mentioned that because I'm not interested in getting married, and then throughout the heat of the moment I said that I'm gay. And my parents, still out now at this point, so probably around six years has passed, uh, my parents are still struggling with it. And um, so I came out to my parents, my mom and my dad. I have a younger sister whom I, had, I haven't came out to. Um, however, uh, the whole story is, is that my parents are dealing with the situation and I am kind of fed up with the whole, this tug of war that we have between me and my parents. And so yeah. Still, my, pr my parents say, like, with messages, that they are praying for me, and they're praying that I can come back. Like, come back is a literal word that they're saying. Um, so, even though they're not praying the gay away, like, as if what a pastor, which I imagine would be more horrific yeah. than what my parents are doing right now I think it's the same thing it's just the degree is just a little different so yeah, yeah. I am with my boyfriend uh, and we've been together close to three years we're living together we're, we're housemates as how I would explain it to other Koreans yes uh, homophobia how I define it first of all it's so clean it's so plainly seen amongst the education sector that the instructors cannot be homosexuals at all to begin with because that's somehow going to teach homosexuality and make them turn into homosexuals uh, in, in wherever they are teaching. So that's the reason why for expats, there is like a lot of expats even hide, they're closeted because they, they can't announce themselves and say that, oh, I'm a specific counselor and I'm studying psychology and counseling right now at the moment. And the reason how I even got into this particular sector is because a dear brother of mine, not my biological brother, but a brother of mine, whom I met at church for over a year, he uh, didn't wake up the next day after uh, overdosing um, uh, uh, sleeping pills. And um, the reason why I know this is because that it was Christmas Eve that he called me and he called me and said that that he was dealing with his issues and he had like a handful of, of sleeping pills and that he was crying out for help, that he was scared and that, that he wanted to live. It was basically a crying out call for me. And right there at the moment, I couldn't go to his place. I, I had just had to be at the phone. And so I was trying to calm him down and, and notifying that the, that the 911 um, people, that the 911 Helpers were coming over to help him, and I sister that he is hospitalized, that he didn't wake up the next day. 
And the reason why he was dealing with these issues was because that he was conflicted with two churches. He went to the church that I was going to, the affirming church, and then he had his mother church, whom his pastor and his pastor's wife were very anti-homosexual. His pastor's wife would even cut, would, would even ask him to take off his shirt that had a rainbow logo on his shirt. And all it had was a late rainbow logo. And the pastor's wife would say, take it off. And she would take a pair of scissors and literally shred it, cut it up into pieces right in front of him. And like he was asking her, why on earth are you doing this? And, and her, uh, her answer was, because it represents homosexuals involved with that. So you can see that he was dealing with these particular situations. And uh, to be honest, I would like to say this very boldly, that it was the pastor and the pastor's wife's fault, that, to be honest, and that, that for a certain individual to go through that much internal pain I think it's just outrageous. That should not be the way how one should actually go through it. So you think it's the pastor and his wife that led him to make the decision to end his life? Not necessarily just to end his life, but he was. He, I think he was pushed into that corner that he couldn't take care of the situation. He, I think he was just exhausted, mentally exhausted. And uh, to be honest... I wanted to help him as much as possible, it, and also other church members trying as much as possible for that to happen. But if you are constantly beaten up like that in your mother church, which means that you went to that church since you were a baby, then like there is something seriously wrong with it, to be honest, yes. Uh, still, parents provide their sons, even after they graduate high school. They would provide tuition for university. They would provide for housing situations. They would even provide for marriage situations. Um, and they would even take care of their grandchildren. So parents are still involved, and this is a huge thing. And it is the duty for the Korean son to get married and, and, and have grandchildren, have children for their parents, and then support their parents when their parents are off pension, they're living on pension. And so, yeah, it, it has been the virtue, of, uh, the virtue for this. So for this matter, it has been very, very hard to come out to parents because it will literally cut all of these ties. If the, if the guy is, if the gay uh, individual is a high school student, then this basically means that he's going to get all the support cut off, starting from allowance, from cell phone bills, from housing, if necessarily. And if a university student, then tuition, then housing situations and all that. And the list goes on and on and on, and no matter what demographic you specifically are in. So, and it's easier with, not only with apps, but it's easier with amongst friends, because now in their early 20s, like, teenage groups and early 20s and mid 20s and and even up to early 30s a lot of people are open to the idea that it's okay that we are that there are gays living amongst us and so it is even more easier to because we still have ties but if we come out to our parents then we lose the ties and everything that that kind of supports us and so it's like cutting off your your support line and so i think that's the reason why that Koreans are, that it would be the last person to come out to, or would be your parents, yes. I see. And what about the most extreme cases? I've heard of men being forced by their parents to marry a woman, knowing yes. that their son was gay, and yes. they hide it from their wife, and then pursue homosexual relationships on the side, even though they've got kids and families. Uh, basically, yes. they're, hitting, they're hiding a lifestyle Yes, exactly, yes. Also, another extreme that I want to share is that this happened, like, this This happened to a person that I know, that their parents are actually wanting to force, to hospitalize their son into a psych ward and to turn him heterosexual through, I don't know, whatever therapy that they're coming up with. So, 
the XK therapy is existing in Korea. But there, I don't think there is a, like an Exodus International kind of a thing in Korea. But there is a pseudo, there is something like that called the Holy Life, which is led by a Korean, uh, Korean a Presbyterian pastor who is very much, uh, he himself is also an ex-gay, he, he calls himself ex-gay, and he is also leading, being the leader of that ex-gay uh, particular program. But beside that particular program, there are family members that who are using, um, uh, kut is another thing that they do, um, how do I translate this? It's um, like calling a shaman and doing like a ritual, like a shaman ritual um, that they do, and they pay lots of money to do this. I actually have heard this. Pay lots of money, and so that the shaman would call out the demon spirit, the, the homosexual spirit, and just make it go away. And so they do that. And also the psych ward is more natural. It's more general, not natural, but it's more general. And so I've heard a lot of threats from families that, that their parents would actually even do that. And so, yeah. So, so far we've got families trying to pray the gay away. They've also got families trying to take them into a psych ward to uh, use some form of therapy, maybe hypnotherapy or something to try and convince them that they're a heterosexual. And then you've got ousting, basically kicking them out of their family. Yes, yes. Okay. Cutting them off, as you put it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I can relate, completely relate to those that would say that they just want to get out of Korea. Because that's exactly the reason. That because of this, there's this, this juxtaposition right here in two realms. Whereas if you stay, if, as a Korean, gay, if a gay, uh, as a gay man in Korea that you stay in Korea, that these are the things that you have to face. And then, if in the Western realm, that there are, like, systems, there are support groups, there are, there are ways that you can actually be independent on your own. Of course, you will have to be as a foreigner, but at least, like, if, there, if you find the right, like, ways to do it, there are ways that, that you can actually still survive and not be worried about. And I think, for that matter, that there is this, Thing uh, to me, it saddens me personally that there is this drastic difference within it, and I can relate to those that who are willing to just flee the country and say, "I want to get a green card in in Australia or in America or Canada or or in a very affirming country where being gay is no longer an issue at all." 